If you're ready to change your life and your reality in 2024, you're going to need to change your identity. That's where it starts. So in this video, I'm going to break down a very simple three-step process on how to do a life review so that you can identify who you have been and change who you are becoming. So step one is to identify the problem. In order to change anything within yourself, you need to understand what is presently not working for you. You have to know what the problem is and then name it in order to have power over it. You can't change something that you're not aware of. You can't change something that you have not identified. So this is a very, very important step in the process. Recognition is like having a daily life review. So it's like, Every single time you have recognition of your old self and the habits that you have and things that you do that are all a part of your old self, you are essentially doing a life review in that moment. The more you notice who you don't want to be, the more you can change who you are. And with practice, this level of awareness can help you override what would otherwise be the predetermined destiny of your mind and body. The automatic, enslaving, hardwired programs of your mind and the memorized emotions that have chemically conditioned your body. Only when you're truly conscious and aware can you begin to wake up from the illusion that your mind and body have created. Only when you become still, quiet, patient, relaxed, and attentive to the habits of your old personality can you disengage from it? This is how you free yourself from the chains of the self-centered nature of your ego, which is only lost in itself, only concerned about itself. To discover aspects of the old self that you want to change, begin with asking yourself the following questions. What kind of person have I been? What kind of person do I present to the world? What kind of person am I really like on the inside? Is there a feeling I experience or struggle with over and over again every day? How would my closest friends and family describe me? Is there something about myself that I hide from others? What part of my personality do I need to work on improving? What is one thing I want to change about myself? Now, the second step to changing your identity is to choose one emotion that you're going to unmemorize. Now, think of this for a moment. Your current state of being and perspective is the sum of your memorized emotions or memorized feelings. These memorized feelings have also conditioned your body to be in the state of being that it is in currently. So, for example, if you feel old, even if you're not old, then your body is actually going to produce symptoms of aging. There's going to be aches and pains everywhere. There's going to be different symptoms of aging that you're going to start to notice, even though you're not actually physically old. And I've heard many, many like 30, 40, 50, 60 year old people saying to me like, oh, I feel so old, you know, and the more they say it, the more they engage the feeling the more they're actually chemically sending a message to the body that the body is old and the body will then respond in kind through symptoms through feelings of aging so be very very discerning about what you're saying because it's all about how you feel how you feel on a regular basis is literally determining your reality on a regular basis and it is also determining your identity so your self-limiting emotions are responsible for your automatic thought processes, which create your attitudes and influence your limiting beliefs about you in relationship to everyone and everything. Now, some examples of survival emotions that strengthen your ego's control over you are going to be things such as insecurity, self-doubt, hatred, judgment, victimization, worry, guilt, depression, shame, anxiety, regret, suffering, frustration, fear, greed, sadness, 
disgust, envy, anger, resentment, unworthiness, and lack. These emotions are all linked together neurologically and chemically. So no matter what you choose to unmemorize or which one of these you choose to unmemorize, you're essentially breaking the chain to all of them. And as you change one of these destructive emotional states, your body's chemistry will also change to align to your new state of being. And this will change many other personality traits within you as well. So it's incredibly important to be aware at all times of how you are feeling and what states of being you are embodying because those states of being are continuously influencing your reality. They are continuously creating the reality that you are experiencing and in return, the universe, your external world responds to your energy, that energy that you are putting out. The third step in changing your identity is going to have to do with observation and recognition. And for this one here, this is what truly creates change within you. So really, really pay attention to this third step and definitely follow through on the exercises I'm going to be mentioning here because it will yield huge results for you if you can really start to tune into yourself. So take a moment right now to observe what you physically feel when you experience an emotion. And the emotions that I listed earlier, all of those negative emotions, the next time that you have, or maybe perhaps currently, you are feeling one of those negative emotions, tune into your physical body and see how it's actually making you feel. Because there are different sensations throughout the body that we always can pick up on that we can actually notice when we are very aware and very tuned into ourselves. Every single feeling that I feel creates a physical experience for me, creates a physical feeling. So it's not just an emotional feeling that I have, but it's a physical feeling in my body. So for example, if I'm in fear uh, about something, the first thing I notice is I feel a contraction within my heart space. I feel a contraction within my chest and it's like a tightening, a pressure, a weight, a heaviness that I start to feel in my chest area. So notice how different feelings are causing different physical symptoms in your body or physical feelings in your body, especially in the moment that you are feeling those negative emotions that I listed earlier. So do you become like hot, irritated, jittery, weak, flushed, deflated, restless, tight. Do you get any of these sensations in your body? Does your, does your leg start, you know, twitching or you start rocking or you start um, kind of, you know, moving your leg back and forth or playing with a pencil or uh, all kinds of different things that we do, right? These are all like sort of physical sensations the nervous system is responding to as a result of a feeling that you're having. So every feeling that you have always has a physical component to it. There's literally chemicals that are being released in your body in the moment that you are feeling those feelings. And this is why becoming aware of what you are feeling at all times is so incredibly important. So scan your body with your mind. Where do you feel a change in your body when these different emotions arise within you? you know, because when you feel happy, for example, you will also have a very different sensation. There's a, an elevation in energy. There's an excitement uh, that follows. There's a euphoric type of feeling that moves through the body physically when you are very happy or very excited about something. So does it change your breathing, for example? Do you feel any physical pain in your body when you feel fear or anger or frustration? Do you feel impatient? Now, once you have identified what you are feeling, allow yourself just to really tune in to the physical sensation of what that feels like in your body in that very moment. Try to tune everything and everyone out outside of you and really, really hone in on this feeling within yourself so that you can become aware of what physical sensations arise within you when you have a certain feeling. And really be vigilant not to 
push down these feelings when they come up within you. So when you get frustrated or when you get angry or whatever, really try to not push them down and definitely don't ignore them, but instead just be present with it and feel it as energy in motion in your body. Allow this awareness to take place because that is how you become more aware is when you allow. The more you restrict a feeling, whether it's a positive or negative feeling, the more you're running from it, the more you're running from yourself in that moment and the less you are in the present moment. So this feeling is who you are in the present moment, whatever it is that you're feeling. So you have to feel it without judgment in order to understand it. Acknowledge it because it is one of the many masks that your personality has memorized a mask that it will frequently wear right how many times have you had a really frustrating situation happen or or how many times have you not wanted to do something and you said yes to it and you suppressed the feeling and the physical sensations that you were getting and feeling from your soul's desire to say no but your mouth saying yes it's important to recognize that what you are feeling in any given moment and the visceral sensations that you are having, the physical sensations you're having with that feeling is who you are in that present moment. Whether you want to run from that or not, it is still who you are in that present moment. And instead of running from it, the best thing you can truly do is just to be still, to be with it. It's also important to recognize that when a negative emotion arises within you, like a feeling of anger or frustration. Keep in mind that this is a, a negative emotion that you have already felt in the past, and it was a reaction to an event in your life, which lingered into a mood, which then turned into a temperament, which then created your personality. So do you see the evolutionary process of when you experience something, particularly if it's something negative? Let's take heartbreak, for example. Gosh, how many of us experience heartbreak? When you have an experience of heartbreak, your body memorizes that feeling because there's such an intense release of chemicals in your body in the moment that you experience that deep sadness or that deep anger or frustration with that other person or whatever it is that arises within you in that moment. The chemicals that are released become very familiar to your nervous system. So the next time that you experience a heartbreak, even though a considerable amount of time has passed and maybe you have, you've, you know, you've moved on and you've done some healing, but the next time that happens, you will be triggered like crazy, right? And when you are triggered in that moment, there's a massive release of chemicals, exactly the same chemicals that were released the very first time you had your heartbreak. So it's like the body just recycles these chemicals and repeats them and eject them out into the body every single time you have a certain emotion every every single time you have a certain experience and this this is essentially what triggers are this is how you get triggered so it's nothing more than a memory it is and and your attachment to that feeling which is what causes us to contract right we get attached to these feelings and we start to identify with these feelings and we think and we believe that that is who we truly are the moment that you are attached to it, it is just really, it means that it's the moment that you mentally and physically have bound yourself to your past. So it has nothing to do with your future. So if your emotions are the end product of your past experiences, then by embracing the same emotion every day, your body is fooled into believing that your external world is staying the same. When in fact, every single day is different, but our reaction to every single day is the same. So you see, that is what needs to change your reaction and your reactions are a part of your identity. So it is the identity that needs to be shifted and changed in order to have a new reality, to have a new experience of each and every single day. And if your body is being conditioned to re-experience the same circumstances in your environment, then you can never evolve, you can never change. If your body is continuously 
putting out the same chemicals, having the same chemical response to the feelings that you continuously have, then you're just in this endless loop. And this is why I see so many people having such a hard time changing and a hard time evolving out of past trauma or out of past pain. This is also why healing can take a considerable amount of time because those chemicals need to be shut off. The only way that you can do that is through having a different feeling, is through having a different reaction. So if you're feeling the same way every single day, like people that are depressed, for example, it's very difficult to get out of a depressed cycle if you're feeling depressed every single day. You are chemically addicted to the feeling of depression that your body is pumping out every single day. And it's going to take work for you to break that cycle of feeling depressed and your body releasing those chemicals of depression. I think people don't realize that our body is a massive chemistry lab and there are an insane amount of chemicals, there are hormones, proteins, all kinds of different things floating in there that are messaging our nervous system, that are directing our nervous system and telling the nervous system how to respond to things. So it's very, very important to understand this if you want to change your identity and if you want to change your reality. You literally cannot have a new reality if you're the same old self who is still living in the past. So as long as you live by this emotion daily, you can only think and experience the past. You cannot experience anything other than what you have already experienced. And so to transform your life, you must transform yourself from the inside out. And as a final thought here, a trigger is nothing more than an intense chemical reaction to a memorized feeling from a past experience. So stop reacting the same way to your triggers or to any triggering situation. And you'll notice that the trigger will become less and less intense to the point where it eventually completely goes away and you will not be triggered any longer by that kind of a situation or that kind of, that kind of a, an experience. This is how you change your identity and therefore your reality. Thanks so much for watching, for tuning in. Hit a like and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to book a private session with me or one-on-one -on -one coaching, the link is in the, in the description box below. You can also sign up for my free seven day meditation challenge, which is also in the description box below. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.